Uh, I'm just kind of curious in general, you, you guys coming into to this year's draft uh, as rookies, um, it's going to be a pretty quick uh, turnaround from draft and then two weeks later you're in camp and then, then games are starting for real uh, after that and, and not much, no summer league. I'm, I'm wondering um, if that feels like a, a whirlwind to you when you think about it and what you can do to be prepared uh, for how quickly everything is going to go for you guys. Um, well, you know, kind of spending the last six months really preparing, you know, being at home, being able to work on our games, work on our weaknesses and turn those into strengths. So, you know, the quick turnaround after the draft, at least for me, um, isn't too much of a big deal. You know, I'm ready to play basketball. I haven't played basketball since January. Um, so I, I'm, I'm just ready to go. I'm excited. My competitiveness is at an all time high. Uh, and even though it's not the typical draft process for me and the rest of the draftees, I'm still having fun, uh, you know, because I don't know any better. To me, this is still a blast. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great. Thanks. With our next question, we'll go to Mark Medina. Hey, Aaron. Uh, Mark Medina here with USA Today. What were uh, what have been some of the unique experiences that have jumped out to you during this whole process, just given uh, just how unique this has been with not having any tournament games, having to do everything virtually and everything else? Uh, I mean, it's been very, very unique. You know, all the Zoom meetings, never used Zoom before in my life, and now I use it almost every day. Uh, so it, it's definitely something that I've gotten used to. Uh, it's not the ideal situation for anybody by any means, but everybody's going through it. Everybody has to get through it. Um, so we're just trying to make the best out of it. I'm trying to turn a negative into a positive and continue having fun and smiling through the whole thing. Great. With our next question, we'll go to Dan Savage. Aaron, for, for some of the guys who haven't watched you as closely, what are some of the strengths that you feel you could bring to an NBA team? Um, you know, obviously from day one, my floor space and my ability to shoot the three ball. Um, and my ability on the defensive end to guard the one through four and play with high energy, high effort, um, and always give it in my all. So that's kind of my game in the short term. Great. Next question, Ryan Rylon Steele. Uh, hey, Aaron, I was wondering if you've had any contact with the Oklahoma City Thunder? Uh, yes, I have. And how did that go, and how would you see yourself fitting in there? Um, it was, it was well. I thought it went well. I thought the interview went well with those guys. Um, they seem like a great group of guys. They're very hardworking. They're very poised, and they do their research. Um, so for me, it seems like they've, that's my kind of organization, you know, a very detail-oriented group of people, um, people that want to be the best and the people that are always working to win. You know, it's never a rebuild season for those guys. You could take their last season, for example. Um, not a lot of people had them you know, tallied up to have the season that they had. But, you know, thanks to the players that they had, the coaching staff that they had, the front office that they have, um, they were able to do something special over there in Oklahoma City. And so uh, moving forward, you know, sh shooting is what, is what is really huge in the NBA right now. And that's my best attribute uh, in my game. So I, seem, I think that'd be a perfect fit to make more room for the creators like Shea and Chris Paul uh, going forward. Great. With our next question, we'll go to Kelly Kaplan. Hey, Aaron. I work for the for the Dallas Morning News. I cover the Mavericks. And so similar question. Uh, have you gotten to talk with the Mavericks yet? And how did that go? Uh, I, I have talked to the Mavericks as well. Uh, I thought it went extremely well, just like the Oklahoma City Thunder. Um, once again, those guys are seem like a very hardworking group of guys. And they, they really know their basketball and they care about their players. Um, it seems like there's a big emphasis over there down in Dallas to make sure that their, uh, their players are taken care of. The players are loving, you know, loving playing for them and loving the experience that they're having down there in Dallas. Um, and so fitting in over there, you know, they got they got a phenomenal player in Luca and he's gonna be a huge uh, creator for the offense. And I can come in and make space for those guys and make their life easier by pulling the defense out to the wing, um, and just letting them get to the basket and make the right plays. Thank you. Thank you. Great. With our next question, we'll go to Ian Begley. Ian. Hey, Aaron, thanks for doing this. Uh, I'm in New York covering the Knicks and the Nets, and I was just curious to see if you would touch base with either team. Um, I've talked to the Nets, and I'm supposed to talk to the Knicks very soon. Um, yeah. And just in terms of, you know, you say you're going to talk to the Knicks, what would you think about potentially ending up 
there on that roster and how you'd fit? Uh, I think it would be great. You know, they have a great young core, a lot of great pieces coming in, a lot of great, uh, great coach um, that's over there right now. So uh, going forward, you know, it's just continuing to build that program and get that city uh, where it used to be back in the glory days, you know, where they belong in the Mecca of basketball. Um, they should be at the top every year. And so me coming in, the plan wouldn't be any different help turn that narrative around and help them get the, uh, get to where they should be. Thank you. Appreciate it. Thank you. Great. With our next question, we will to Matt George. Matt. Hi, Aaron. This is Matt George from KHDK Radio in Sacramento. Uh, kind of a similar question. Have you had any contact with the Sacramento Kings? Then how can you envision yourself fitting in alongside uh, a speedy point guard like De'Aaron Fox, learning from a shooter like Buddy Heald? Uh, I have not talked to Sacramento yet. I also am supposed to talk to them extremely soon later this week. Um, but as far as being on, it's pretty much the same thing. You know, you have a great creator in De'Aaron Fox, who's extremely fast, in my opinion, probably the fastest person in the NBA right now, just getting from end to end uh, with the basketball. And so if I'm on the wing, sprinting down the sidelines, spotting up in the corner of the wing for them open threes, once he creates that space, you know, it's an easy assist for him. It's easy money for me. And that would be great, great ball movement and great momentum going on uh, for the rest of the Great. And our next question, we'll go to Dwight James. I'm Dwight. with NBC Sports Northwestern. Can you, do you have a feel for which of these teams might be the most interested in you? Um, not, not, not quite yet. You know, uh, that's not really my focus right now because, you know, the draft is not here yet. We're still a week away. Um, so right now I'm still in, still in completely getting ready for that next level mode, you know, working on my weaknesses, trying to make those my strengths. Have you talked to the trailblazers? I have talked to the trailblazers. Yes, sir. Great. With our next question, go ahead. Okay. Next question, Eric Walden. Hi, Aaron. Thank you for uh, taking the time. I cover the jazz uh, here in Salt Lake City for the Salt Lake Tribune. Just wondering what your level of interaction has been with them and uh, how you view your potential fit with that franchise. Um, yeah, the jazz were one of the earlier teams that I talked to. So getting the opportunity to talk to those guys and have them pick my brain and for me to pick theirs uh, was very uh, beneficial. And it was a very fun process to do. Um, so moving forward, you know, they have guys like Donovan Mitchell and Rudy Gobert who absolutely played phenomenal in the first round of the playoffs this past season. Um, and, you know, me being out there in the wing will do nothing but make their life easier, being able to spread that floor, being able to allow Donovan Mitchell to have more space and kind of carry, take some of the load off them uh, on the scoring wise and on the defensive end, you know, just being another anchor for those guys and being an effort and energy guy on the defense, diving on loose balls, getting deflections and taking charges. Thank you. Great. Thanks. With our next question, we'll go to James Ham. James. Hey, how's it going, Aaron? Um, you've had plenty of time here to really prepare. What is it that you focused on? You said shoring up your weaknesses, but what is it like? Is it your body? Is it a specific aspect of your game that you've worked on? Um, you know, just becoming an all around better basketball player. Um, you know, I said it's not a secret. You know, my best attribute going into the NBA is my shooting and being able to spread that floor, but, you know, trying to expand my game and try to make myself a more complete basketball player, making the right reads at the right time and making, uh, making the right play for my teammates. So, uh, you know, just trying to not be so, uh, try and make my game more multi-dimensional and just become a better basketball player as a whole on both sides of the floor. Great. Thank you. Uh, we just have time for about one or two more questions. We'll go to Alder Tiam Almo. Alder? Hi, Aaron. Uh, I would like to ask, who are the teams who, whom you've worked out with? Uh, who are the teams I've worked out with? Yeah. Um, I've worked out with uh, five teams so far, um, and I think they have all gone very well. Um, you know, I've put a lot of hard work and effort into those workouts, and, you know, I'm excited to see the decisions that those guys make on draft day. Can you mention them, or...? Oh, can I mention them? Um, I've worked out with the uh, the Pelicans, the Suns, the Spurs, um, the Miami Heat, and the um, Pistons. Thank you. Thank you. Great. 
uh, with our next question, we'll go to Justin Quinn. Hi, I'm uh, with the USA Today Sports Media Group covering the Celtics. Um, so you have not worked out with them? Uh, the Boston Celtics, I have not worked out with them yet, but it is scheduled. Um, it's scheduled for this week, so there'll be another good one to get in, another one I'm going to put my all into and give 110%. How would you envision your fit for them? Uh, I think it would be very well. You know, they got a, a good good core group of guys, really talented, and they're all very young. Um, so, you know, going forward, the, that team has a very bright future, and I think I can step right in and just make life easier for those guys once again. For, uh, Kemba Walker, Jason Tatum, Jalen Brown, uh, Marcus Smart, et cetera, just giving those guys more space and more room to operate, um, I think is going to really help elevate their game and make life easier. Thanks, Ben. Thank you. Great. And with our final question, let's go to Dave Foster. Dave? Um, hey, Aaron. Uh, Dave Foster with the Fox affiliate in Nashville. Um, obviously, there were some ups and downs at Vanderbilt during the time you were there. What, uh, what do you think you'll take from your time on West End as you look towards this new chapter? Um, there's so much for me to take from my time at West End. I had a blast two years down there. Wouldn't trade it for anything in the world. Um, Definitely just the professionalism that I learned and at my time at Vanderbilt, especially from Coach Stackhouse in particular, um, just the approach that he kind of instilled into the game uh, in me, you know, the accountability that he made sure I held myself to, the standard that he held me to, um, just, you know, kind of eat, breathe, sleep, completely live in basketball 24-7, um, just continue to have that approach, that mindset, and continuing to get better 1% each day. Thanks for watching ESPN on YouTube. For live streaming sports and premium content, subscribe to ESPN+.